All right, so I had this idea to try and flip the uh, N.E.R.D. and Rihanna song, Lemon. The song's got a whole bunch of little samples and shrieks and yelps all over the track. And the drums are banging, so I figured I could do something with it. But here's what happened, right? At first I start messing with it. The thing you gotta be careful when you do these routines is it's easy to fall into old habits. First thing I did was, well, I don't have an instrumental, but at the end of the song, there's an instrumental section. So I grabbed this thing here. You can catch me! What? Wait a minute! What? Wait a minute! Alright, this sounds juggleable. So I grab two copies and I start messing around. You can catch me! What? Wait a minute! me that's all right but the thing with flipping these records is there's patterns that you can do to similar records that have the same kinds of tempos and then there's patterns that are tailor-made for the track that you're using I've always been more interested in tailor making the patterns for what I'm using so this first thing that I was messing around with in the back of my head I was like yeah it's cool but I've heard it so I started thinking again about well, why did I choose this record? And I was saying, you know, there's all these little vocal bits and stuff. So I started thinking like, all right, let me put <clears throat> cue points on the various parts that stick out to me. Some, you know, it could even be snare drums, but obviously all the little Pharrell vocals and the yeah and that kind of shit. And let me see what comes out from it. And my philosophy is sort of the record needs to talk to you. So when I'm trying to come up with you know, some tricks or patterns, I'm really just trying to get to this state where the idea starts speaking from the record to me and then I'm just trying to recreate the idea that's starting to like emanate. To facilitate that, I try to create these little tools for myself. I put some markers on like... This one I use it because it's a long 808. Right? Um, good old shriek. What I'm starting to hear in my head isn't even fully on the record. Because what I like about this is A, all these little vocal bits. I'm imagining this sort of like live remix where I'm messing around with beats and there's just little bounce in they and like you could catch me, little things going on over the beat. But really, the other thing that's characteristic about this track is this little percussive. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. A little cook, cook, cook. And I'm imagining like what if I could isolate that? And the more I think of the tentative flip in my head, I'm hearing like more of a, you know, exaggerated bass line, the isolated little bleeps and bloops, and then the vocal patterns. So I'm starting to think that I'm gonna have to like create some tools for myself that go beyond what's actually on the song. Because the reality is if I'm just flipping the drums around, it's kind of flat, it's kind of 2D, and I wanna make this 3D, right? Like I think my favorite, routines and, and, and you know, turntablist tricks are when there's at least some sort of percussive element and something either melodic or synth based or vocal based, but something over the drum that the ear can follow. It's very hard to make a, a memorable beat with only percussive elements. So I'm thinking everything that's non-drum on here, I might need to like exaggerate it so I can flip it even more. So I decided to fire up the old Ableton and create a couple sound samples that follow what's on the song, but that exaggerate it. I made a sound similar to that little bleep, but I cut up the drum so that it's, it's more isolated. That way I could, I could try to flip it more. So that's the same, that's the drums from Pharrell's beat but with the little bleep even more by itself. And I'm just, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with this yet, but I'm just thinking, let me create tools that I'm liable to get creative with. The other thing that I like about the track is the, the 808 melody, the boom, 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 boom. I grabbed a few synths, and again, not really knowing what I would do with it, I, you know, use the same melody to make this sort of like remixed, larger than life version. Of that of that bass line.
I can already tell that the record in its original form is doesn't have those isolated elements in a strong enough way that I can do something that feels like next level enough. So I go and make my exaggerated version of those sounds that I can then use in conjunction with the real song and create my sort of remix, live remix thing. So then what I do is I load the original version of the song on this deck and my little tool with, you know, the remixed extra versions of those sounds on this side. And I just start messing around and I try to, you know, create patterns. I like the idea that these videos end up on Instagram where they have to fit in one minute because I know from experience that when I force myself to make these patterns fit into a minute, I have to trim the fat on inevitably some of the ideas and it forces me to only keep the best stuff. So I love that one minute constraint. So the first thing that jumps out at me is bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing. This thing that's by itself sort of a cappella. I'm literally just hitting pads until a beat jumps at me and something that's original enough because it needs to sound different from the original track. It needs to be apparent that I am flipping this around. I like how that's got that shuffly, different kind of drum groove to it. So that could be one thing, because it feels like I'm taking the track somewhere else. Right away, one thing I'm mindful of is I like to have a balance between like busy and bare, right? Because you're giving the listener a lot of information and they're sort of like, oh shit, I think I, I think I followed the beat. Oh wow, that's crazy. If you keep going from crazy to crazy, they're gonna be like, I don't even know what you're doing anymore. And I'm remembering that I have this little tool that I made for myself. Right away with this guy, I know that um, there's this roll tool on here that can repeat a sound. So I'm already thinking, right? I'm gonna use this. What kind of pattern is this going to be? I'm thinking that's one bar. How do I go from that snare back to the top of the beat? And I thought, you know what? This could be a one turntable drumming thing. It just needs like a little sauce. And there's this break echo effect. That's one of the Serato software effects that I can control on the mixer. So I'm thinking maybe that's the end of my phrase. And the thing that's cool is when that's on wet, it completely cuts off the sound from the deck so I can rewind, I can bring back my record to the top of the bar, which is where I need to get. And then there's the aha moment. What was that? That break echo on the little bleep sounds crazy. Fucking Star Wars. So the, what I'm doing on the record can stay super simple because I need people to just bop their heads. I'm thinking of the head nod. And the effects is where you get the impressive, you know, sci-fi factor. I like that. So I'm like, oh, I already have two patterns. In that one minute thing, there's only so many patterns I can squeeze in there. But now I remember my little baseline things. So I start messing around with these guys. And because I put a bend on there, I just, I want to, I want to transform it already. That already sounds good. I like how big and open that synth bass sounds, but I need like at least a snare. So then I remember this thing that I've been enjoying recently, which is if you're on internal mode on Serato and you hit a cue point, it triggers the sample, but it doesn't, let the song play. It just triggers for as long as your finger is hitting the pad. I know this because when I play on CDJs and I'm playing on HID mode, this is a little geeky, sorry. If I hit the cue points on HID, which is which runs off an internal, I get this stuttery thing where the song's not actually, the, the song doesn't keep playing. So I don't have to remember to bring it back. I just don't even have enough hands to do that, but I can at least trigger something like a snare. At some point in my set here, 
I'm gonna need to toggle from relative mode, which is how I usually play on Serato, to internal to do this stuttery snare thing. So what I did is I mapped the internal toggle on this pad right here. So now I'm on internal mode, and this is the thing I was talking about. It sounded complicated, it's super simple. But what it is is, when I hit this snare, which is from the song, the song, the song doesn't keep playing, so I don't have to worry about bringing it back. That's cool, but it doesn't sound fully complete yet. And the scratch that I like, as that's happening, I, I'm supposed to be hitting a snare. So then I gotta teach myself how to multitask my hands um, and still hit the snare and transform the bass at the same time. All right. Now I'm using two hands and it's interesting and it's actually tough and I like when something's tough. And I decide to go back to that 808. Fill out the beat a little more. So I end up with this. Which is pretty tough. Then I gotta piece the whole thing together. So let's try to stitch this Frankenstein up into one giant Spread. Okay. Bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing, bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing, bouncing. I try to tell y'all about this dude. Bouncing, 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 bouncing,